don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. My next question comes from Michelle. Michelle is writing from Northern California. She says, Betsy, I would love help knowing what to do with this quote unquote bar area. I don't want to display liquor or bottles. What do I do with the seating area, which sits right next to it? And what do I do with the big long wall to break everything up in this zone? Maybe a mirror? Okay, Michelle, so you sent in some great pictures which are helping to illustrate the situation. And as I click through them here, you have a very mid-century modern space. It looks like it came right out of the 60s, which is, of course, a style I love. But you have some tile flooring that looks overall to be like a gray speckle. And you have a beautiful walnut tone wood ceiling, walnut tone wood trim. You have like a rich green backsplash in your kitchen, which opens up into this kind of sitting area slash bar zone. Now you're calling this a bar, but to me, it's not necessarily a bar. It doesn't scream that vibe. There is one side that has a glass front cabinet. On the bottom, it has enclosed cabinets. Certainly that could read bar, but it doesn't have to. It could also read hutch, display shelf. Then on the other side, there's kind of this strange opening that's equidistant in terms of size, but it doesn't have any doors on it. So it's open with two exposed shelves at the top, no exposed shelves at the bottom, You've inserted a wood tone credenza in this wood tone sort of vacant space. It's again, sort of a walnut wood that's a very close match to the surroundings. And you've put like a record player and some speakers on there, which I think is a super fun vibe. However, I think this area needs to be more considered and more intentional. And I think that it needs to be more holistic with the rest of the space you do have this sitting area that appears to be right next to it. So you need to be considering what are people looking at? What is the function of the space in this zone, right? Are we in the dining area? From the pictures, I can't really tell where this bar space lands. If it's close to the bar area, if it's more close to the seating area, it's unclear to me. Or did I say if it's close to the dining area? Hopefully I said that. So it's unclear to me where this falls, but when you've got a weird sort of niche in your home, an area that you just don't know what to do with, you want to ask yourself, what's it around, right? What's it next to? Is it next to my home office? Well, then I style it with functionality that lends towards that. Is it next to my dining room? Well, then let me style the upper part as a hutch with maybe some beautiful dishware, some vases, and then, you know, take advantage of the other space to also kind of enhance that vibe. No matter what the function is that you foresee for this zone, I would consider a couple of things. One option is to remove the credenza. Well, that's a must, right? That little credenza you've inserted into the bottom of the right-hand side just looks random. Uh, Remove that. Put it somewhere else. I love that it's mid-century modern, but it's ill-fitting and awkward. I would consider making additional shelves, so just buying more shelving and inserting it in the void so that way you have open shelving on one side and this sort of hutch type idea on the other side. I think that could be a really nice look that could offer you different types of display. You could style it with baskets, books, picture frames. Just don't make it too cluttery because it's got some wood paneling behind there and then there's more wood paneling on the wall. So there's a lot going on here and I feel like it's looking a little cluttery and it's not looking so sophisticated. Another thing that might be nice, depending on sort of the structural integrity of things, is maybe we want to remove the doors on the left-hand side the mirror, or I'm sorry, not the mirrored, the glass doors, as well as the opaque wood panel doors on the bottom, just remove them. Wood fill in the gaps from the hinges, stain it all because it looks like it's in need of some fresh stain or a little love, and then treat the two sides identically. 
Uh, in fact, maybe you can even separate that middle partition, just remove that and make nice elongated shelves. So the moment is much more simple. If you decide to do that, I think it would be really cool to lose the wood paneling behind there altogether since there is so much paneling. I mean, even the ceiling is paneled. And it could be fun to do some kind of wallpaper back there, to do some kind of colorful paint treatment. A couple episodes back, I talked about how to cover wood paneling in a really easy way. And there's a thick wallpaper that you can apply to the back of this that will cover the grooves in the wood paneling without having to remove it. It's such an affordable fix. And then you could either apply more wallpaper on top of that liner, that thick wallpaper liner. You could add a decorative wallpaper on top or you could paint on top. That would turn this what I'm going to say is an eyesore. I know, Michelle, I'm sorry. It, it kind of is. That would transform this eyesore into something really special, almost a wow moment. If you don't want to remove the doors on the left-hand side, you could still do the paint treatment behind both sides. I think that would still really brighten and freshen the space. But the number one thing I would do, I would do this with such a quickness, Michelle, is you need to replace the knobs that are on those doors that I spoke about. The top knobs on the glass doors are currently round. The bottom knobs on the wooden panel doors are currently like a cylinder. And the thing I hate about any knob that is not round, whether it's oval, triangle, square, cylindrical, the thing I hate about it is you can always tell from a mile away, if it's crooked, if it's turned a little bit. In this case, I can clearly tell that one of your knobs is turned and I can't stop looking at it. It's like a train wreck. I just can't look away. So I definitely want you to fix that. That is a $3 Home Depot fix and it will immediately freshen and make this space look updated. I would stick with the same tone because you want to match with the hinges. So don't go too bold with these new round knobs, but that is an easy and quick change that you should make today if you choose to keep those doors. That's my two cents, Michelle. When you write in, careful what you wish for because I'm going to tell you what I think. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Ginny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support.